Ladies and gentlemen, here's my mommy and daddy from my friend Flip. If you're arrested, it's a lawyer you need. If you feel poorly, you better call an MD. If you act crazy, you need psychiatry. So solve your problems expertly. Don't let your neighbors cure your disease. Don't let your brother cut down your trees. It's so expensive to do things for free. So just don't ask me. Please don't ask me. If I can fix your brain, please don't ask me If I can clean your drain, please don't ask me If it's gonna rain, you'll just get angry when I'm wrong again If you want honey, go ask the bees If you want lumber, go ask the trees If you want swamp gas, ask your MP But just don't ask me Contestant Jerry Wilkes has to decide whether to quit and keep what he's already won or risk it all and go for the money. Please welcome him. He's a retired management trainee, Jerry Wilkes. Uh, you know, Jerry is a very special human being. He has an IQ over 200, he has a photographic memory and total recall. How are you tonight, Jerry? Not too bad, Barb. You haven't seen my car keys, have you? <laughs> Jerry, you know, you've been here 11 weeks now, and you've really, you've really done very well. Thank you. If you decide to quit tonight, you'll walk out of here with $785,000. What would you buy with all that money? Oh, I've always wanted a jogging suit. <laughs> Wilco's got one I've kind of had my eye on, so I'll, I'd probably buy that and maybe a castle. <laughs> on the other hand, Jerry, if you decide to go on, yes. you could double... That seven hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars, which would be, well, Jerry, <laughs> you tell me, how much would that be? Seven hundred eighty-five thousand times two, be about a million, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Now, Jerry, there's only one thing. Yes. If you decide to go on, yes. And if you should lose, yes. You lose all the money. I know it's a big decision. I know you've been thinking about it all week. Yes. Let's have your decision now, Jerry. Yes or no? Okay, okay. I've decided, Barb. I've decided yes, I'm going to go on. You stupid jerk! <laughs> oh, I see your wife's here, Jerry. <laughs> well, if you just like to go in the booth, we'll get started. Now, your question tonight is in four parts in your category of general knowledge. I'll read all four parts, then you will have ten seconds to answer them. Part one. There is a country named Paraguay in South America. What is the capital city of Paraguay? Part two. One of the great disasters of all times was the sinking of the Titanic. Exactly how many people were on the Titanic when it went down? Part three. Many people are aware that the Battle of Hastings was a turning point in history. In what year was the Battle of Hastings? And the fourth and final part. In the New Testament, the three wise men brought gifts to the Holy Child. They brought gold, myrrh, and what else? 
Good luck, Jerry. Okay, Jerry, time's up. We need your answers now. What is the capital city of Paraguay? I believe it's Santa Burrito. Uh, I'm going to have to ask for a ruling on that. <laughs> I didn't go for it, Jerry. Uh, next, how many people were on the Titanic? I believe Barbara was over a hundred. Can you be more specific, Jerry? Yes, I can, Barb. Over 101. Well, I'm going to have to ask for a ruling. <clears throat> the third part. Excuse me, Barb. The third part asks you for the year of the Battle of Hastings. 1953. No. 1862. No. 1412. No. 1195. It's got to be my final offer, Barb. Now, Jerry, you've lost all the money. Yes, I have, Barb. Yes. But if you can answer this fourth and final part, Jerry, we'll cover your cab fare. Now Great. think. Think. Yes, yes. The wise men brought gold and gold myrrh. Gold and myrrh. And what else? Gold and myrrh. I don't know, Barb. Sure you do. No, I don't. I'll give you a hint. They brought gold yes. and myrrh uh -huh. and something that begins with F. Fried chicken. No, Jerry. You blew it. Come on out. Come on out, Jerry. I'm, I'm sorry, Jerry. You, you blew it. I can't believe it, Barb. I, I don't know what happened. Well, I'll tell you what happened, you turkey. He gave next week's answers. It's a big lift to hear yourself crow And it's a put down to say I don't know So if I keep quiet, then no one will know how dumb I be So just don't ask me Thank you, thank you, Deb. <laughs> thank you, and please welcome our guest, Ronnie Abramson.
How you doing, Ace? You can call me Pearl. I've been the Pearl of Great Price, and I've been the Pearl cast before swine. Pull up a chair, I'll tell you about it. You don't mind if I have a drink, do you? You know, when you come up through the school of hard knocks, you switch to high octane. My problem is I'm 20 years ahead of my time. You see, I've always been a liberated feminist. Of course, in those days, we just called it butch. <laughs> Mainly, I guess it was my daddy's influence. He always told me, don't just stand back and let a man make a jackass out of himself if you think you can do the same. <laughs> Even in high school, the other girls are so weak and helpless. Most of them had chest colds. They're always putting Kleenex in their sweaters. <laughs> Not me. I was just me, doing whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. If I heard music, I'd just grab a guy and start dancing. The heck with the other people on the elevator. <laughs> I remember my first office job. Whenever the manager walked by my desk, I'd just reach out and give his rear end a little tweak. <laughs> That kind of thing. <laughs> Should have seen his face turn red. It was the funniest thing. Every time I tweaked his rear end, his face would turn red. I told him I wanted to tweak his face and see what happened to his rear end. I didn't work there very long. Oh, I had lots of men come up to the apartment, but they always wanted the same thing. To leave. I guess it was just as well, though, because by that time, my career was in full stride. I was receptionist at a wrecking yard. And you know, I just could never find a man that I could give it all up for. In fact, the only one that even came close was my own father. He was already married. Plus, he was about 14 years older than me. But I'm not giving up. Maybe someday I'll find someone who's gentle and kind, doesn't mind me buying them things and dressing them up and showing them off to the other girls. <laughs> Is it so hard to find a good old-fashioned and feminine man? <laughs> Wish me luck. You know, you're kind of cute, Ace. The great bearded family of Canada. <laughs> a lot of the uh, a lot of the women in, in my family seem to have beards. I, I don't know. I noticed that. And it's this Kenny Rogers impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same beard. It seems to be passed on from generation to generation. I have another one coming up. Stephanie, the the twin sister. Oh, I can hardly wait. Up. Yeah. But I want you to know there is some class in the family. <laughs> please go and prove that. <laughs> I'm gonna do a song by Kenny Rogers. Oh, goody. See you later. What's this called? So I get it right. Here's mine.
Hi, we're at the Comedy Club this week to see Evan Carter. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, I was noticing a little while ago about the, uh, the clothes that the kids were wearing nowadays and how uh, different they are from the clothes that we used to wear. Like, uh, my mother made me take my little brother shopping the other day. He just got back from summer camp in Uganda. And, uh, yeah, we sent him to Camp Edie every year. It's great. You know, I got slides of him and Edie. <laughs> and another little camper in the background <laughs> on a spit. And, um, well, they have to get their merit badges somehow, folks, you know. But the thing is, the clothes the kids are wearing now, it's great because they, they've got regular Levi denims and they've got jean jackets. Remember the clothes you and I used to wear when we went to public school? Like, we, our parents would buy us those polyester bell bottoms. The ones that when they got wet, they smelled like fish. Remember those things? Are, Go on out and play. Uh-uh. We're going out and play. I smell like a trout from... I was like, oh, what's going on? Well, get out of the house. Listen, when your father was going to school, here it comes, you know. He had to wear everything his parents bought him, and he had to walk 127 miles to go to school with a pair of feet he shared with his older brother. You have your own feet. Get out of the house. You know, the rest of it gets you those rubber boots, the ones with the little buckles on them, and a million inches of pie lining. Soak up a ditch just like that, boy. You know those things? 506 year olds coming home from school on a wet day, and it's like, <laughs> Mom, I'm home. And I think I have a hernia. <laughs> For us, the fireman boots, remember those ones? They came up really high, and they had a little red ring around the top. Only babies wore them straight up. The cool guys would roll them down, get that pirate look. Remember that six years old, walking through the schoolyard, got my jean jacket undone down to my navel, got my pirate boots on, trying to impress the girls by saying stuff like, hey, baby, I write with a pen. <laughs> girls like that. See, the, the stuff the girls used to wear were great, you know, I mean, it was, like, they used to wear those thick beige leotards. Now, yes, you did, I can see the scars, you can't fool me. And they had millions of tiny little bulletproof fluff balls stuck all over them, boy. And no matter how well you thought they fit, the crotch was always down here. It was like, from here to here was trampoline, you know. I used to play baseball with my younger sister, and she never had a glove, you know. Bow, yay! Bow, all right! Bow, bow! And if we had a game, she was the back catcher, you know. Bam, he's stealing second. Bam, got him. All right. Three's out, game's over. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you. Thank you. The wife and I are bionic. We both have mechanical parts. Whenever our sprockets get dirty, we drink Pen W30. My brain's a tiny computer. I somehow replaces my heart. If mouse words and start skipping, it's because my transmission is slipping. We're model entities of technical. Expertise. We're robots, we're hot shots With fuel injectors and semiconductors And heat sinks and piston rings Extra strong and never wrong As long as we hold our ground We give off jolts of a million volts So we don't fool around our resistance is down Both of our legs are electric So we're not allowed to have shorts If I blow a fuse when I'm talking I'm liable to say something shocking We have a regular Inspection for mechanical perfection They dust us and adjust us If we've lost our bearings from something we're wearing It's a smooth rub and a quick loop job Our dents are noted and undercoated Our plugs are clean for free Our gear teeth are flossed, they check our exhaust It's not a lot of fun for me they say it's a necessity As long as we continue to be underwater Thank you!
And help us thank Ronnie Abramson and Evan Carter. <laughs>